Hey, what's going on guys? And Time Master 64 here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Now I've been super, super excited for this game ever since I played the first game back all the way in, oh god, like 2019. I've been a massive fan of the game and the way Insomniac is making the games. I love the Miles Morales side game. In fact, I'm doing another playthrough right now. They're just fantastic games, and I've been so excited to see where this series goes next. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. My entire room is basically covered in Spider-Man. I don't really cover a lot of Spider-Man stuff on my channel. I've done a few videos on No Way Home stuff, as well as the terrible 2017 show, and a few reactions to Marvel Spider-Man 2 stuff, but this is the first dedicated video I'm doing to discussing it. Because I have a lot to say, I'm really excited for this game, but I also have a few worries and doubts, but, you know, we're just going to be going over a little bit of those today, and, yeah, let's, let's just get into it. So, first of all, I wanted to say that I'm a little bit apprehensive about the game. There's a lot of things that I do like about the game, and I like what I've seen, but I'm still a little bit worried for certain things. But the first thing I want to talk about, really, is the suits. Now, if you know anything about Spider-Man games, it's the fact that alternate suits are basically... They're an essential. Almost every Spider-Man game on console has alternate suits. The movie games, not so much. Even Well, the first movie game had the Human Spider and uh, the Alex Ross concept art suit. The second game, I don't believe, had any suits. But the third game had the Symbiote suit, of course. And then I think every subsequent uh, game afterwards, except for Web of Shadows, had alternate suits. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. And even technically you could say that Web of Shadows had alternate suits, but only on the Wii for some reason. Anyways, I want to get into the suits because we have a lot to discuss. So first up, we have the classic suit. So the way Insomniac is handling the suits around this time is a little bit different from how they did it in the first game. In the first game, a suit was just a suit. That, that was it. It had one style. You couldn't do anything to it. It was either you like that suit or too bad. This time around, they are taking the Crystal Dynamics Marvel's Avengers approach of making each suit have its own unique color swapping. I'm not too jazzed about that because, okay, it's a neat idea on paper, and sometimes it can work well, like with the classic suit here. But here's the problem. It can also mean other suits, which we will see later, get completely shafted in favor for just a recolor. Which really sucks, because Spider-Man has so many amazing suits. With characters like Iron Man and Black Widow, you can just do recolors, because they don't really stand out from suit to suit. But Spider-Man's suits are so unique, that if you just slap the colorations of one suit onto another, it just ends up looking pretty lame. But we'll get into that once we actually talk about what these suits are. So the classic suit, of course, has the regular red and blue variant. Kinda weird how it seems the original classic suit hasn't had a color shift. Cause we know that the advanced suit, the newer one, has a color change. It's a lot more red, where previously it was orange. It doesn't look like the classic suit has changed much. Or maybe that's just the weird lighting. Who knows? But yeah, it's just it's just a classic suit. It's alright. Second one is Webman. Now, if you don't know what Webman is, basically Webman is a clone of Peter Parker, and he's supposed to be an exact opposite. Unfortunately, because of that, he's a bumbling idiot. So, th yeah, that's Webman. He's, he's, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird how, I think, besides Avengers, this is the only other game to have Webman as an alt. Okay, you know, it's, it's a cool reference. I don't know if I'll ever wear it, but it's a cool reference. And then we have the classic suit with the very dark navy, almost black color. Which is, of course, a reference to Spider-Man's original colors, which were red and black. It's perfect. I mean, if if the back logo is light blue, which we don't, you know, see, then it would be perfect. If it was light blue. I don't think it will be, but if it is, it'll be the perfect costume in the game. Then we have a really weird decision. A lot of people predicted it, but I still think it's dumb. It's the classic suit with a white spider logo. Why? Shouldn't, I don't know, I feel like that should be reserved for either a negative suit or just use that for the damaged suit. If you want to keep the classic damaged suit, put that there. I don't know, it's, it's a weird choice. Overall, the classic suit has a solid lineup of different 
you know, variations. When using the classic suit, I'll probably stick to the red and navy blue black color because it's just the best looking one in my opinion. I, I prefer Spider-Man with a darker blue. I like lighter blue on Spider-Man. Like, if it's like super light, I like it. But something about like black just really fits Spider-Man to me. The next suit is the purple rain suit for Miles Morales. So of course you're going to be able to switch between Peter and Miles throughout this game at any given moment. Sometimes you have to play as Peter or you have to play as Miles for certain missions and side missions, but for the most part you can switch between them at any time. And that's awesome. That, that is completely amazing and the best way of doing it. And you will even be able to see Miles or Peter doing their own thing around the city while you're swinging around. So say you're heading towards a crime, you can either see Peter or Miles heading towards that crime or already there doing stuff to stop the crime. And then you can perform team takedowns and all of that. It is awesome. It is really, really cool. But on to the suit. I mean, it's the Purple Rain suit. I never really cared for it in the Miles Morales game. We just have a few color variants here, nothing really to, to say. Although we do have two returning suits, well, nah, I lie, three or four returning suits. The Great Responsibility suit, the Sportswear suit, the uh, 2099 suit, and the 2020 suit, all for Miles, are returning from the Miles Morales game. And those are probably the best suits in that game besides the Spider-Verse suit, so... I mean, I'll probably stick to the 2099 suit because it's just the best one that Miles has, but this is, you know, pretty, pretty cool. If you want the Purple Rain suit to be gray or... Miles' classic colors, you can, but for some reason the classic colors have the eyes like orange with a white, weird looking lens. Not sure why that is, but hey, if you want it, there you go. Next we have whatever this suit is. I'm not quite sure what this suit is called, it didn't get any name. I, I apologize if I don't know the exact names of suits. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, but sometimes the suits get all jumbled in my head and I can't distinguish the names. I know what they are and what they're from, but I, I can't tell the names. Like, there's two Velocity suits. I'm confused. Anyways, we're not really focusing on Miles' suit here. I'm mainly focusing on the suit in the back, which is Ben Riley's current Spar Scarlet Spider suit. Now, I'm not a fan of that suit compared to the original Scarlet Spider suit, but you know, it's an okay suit. Hopefully it doesn't have the gross mouth thing that the comic version has, but you know, it's just something to bring up. And next we have the Superior Spider-Man suit. Now, I love the Superior Spider-Man suit a whole bunch, like a lot. I don't like the story, but I like the suit. And it seems we are not getting the Superior Spider-Man storyline because a lot of the uh, suits tie down to the story. So obviously we didn't have the black suit or anything related to the black suit in the first game because it wouldn't make sense because they wanted to do Venom stuff. Obviously they don't want to do the Superior Spider-Man story so they just put the suit in the game, which is pretty cool. Obviously we have the first Superior Spider-Man suit, then a blue variation, which I actually like a lot, then a black and red instead of red and black. And you know, it, it kind of reminds me of a Miles suit, so it kind of works. And then we have the example of what I was talking about earlier. A suit that just gets shoved into a different suit, but recolored. It is uh, one of Dr. Octopus's suits, Wow Spider-Man. It, it's a good suit. I like the suit, but it's just a recolor. It's just a recolor, instead of being its own suit. And what's kind of crappy is that suit does have its own unique logo, its own unique everything. And here it's just relegated to a recolor of the superior suit, which thematically makes sense because it's still Doc Ock in the body, so it makes sense thematically, but it just feels like it's kind of lazy. I'm not calling Insomniac lazy because, I mean, they've poured their hearts into this game, and it's you can tell just by looking at it that they have put so much effort and soul into making this game. So I'm not calling them lazy. I just think they skipped out on a little bit of the suits, but that's, you know... Development time is hard. Developing games hard. I completely understand that. I just personally wish they handled it differently. But I'm not calling them lazy. <laughs> Next, we have different Miles suits. We have the 10th anniversary suit, the Puerto Rican suit, and the Iron Spider suit. So the 10th anniversary suit is 
exactly what it sounds like. Miles got that suit for his 10th anniversary of existing. Not his 10th birthday, because that would be weird. No, his 10th anniversary suit. Fantastic suit, always loved it. It, you know, hasn't been around for that long, but it's it's really good. And the Puerto Rican suit is also just because he's from Puerto Rico. Like, that's where his family is from, so of course he's going to be wearing that. And it's the flag, it's awesome. You know, it's great. It's a great suit. It ha ties to Miles. I think he even has a flag on his house. So, it's cool. Probably going to wear that a, a lot because I just like the representation. And I just think it's cool for Miles. Next, we have another recolor. It's not exactly the Iron Spider Miles suit, but it is a reference to it. It's alright. Like, you know. Alright. But, we have interesting ones here. The 20... 99 black suit and the Sam Raimi black suit. Now, something about 2099 that's always bothered me in games is 2099 suit is supposed to be black. It's supposed to be black. That's why in all games it's called the black suit, the 2099 black suit, but it's never been represented in a game. But here we have a 2099 black suit but with white. Cause I'm like pretty sure it's just supposed to be a symbiote version. I don't know if a symbiote version exists in the comics because I, I really have not read any 2099 comics. I apologize. But if it does and that's the design, it is cool. I would hope, I hope and pray that they have a version of the 2099 black suit with the original red logo. Because then it would be perfect. It would be 10 out of 10 perfect 2099 suit. But of course, you know, who cares about that? We have the Raimi black suit. We have it. It's in the game. There was no doubt it would be in the game. Like, obviously it's in the game. Of course it's in the game. Come on. It's the Raimi black suit. You can't just have the Raimi suit in the first game, not put it in the second game, and not have the black suit. It's just a no-brainer. You're going to do it. I'm not a big fan of the eyes. They seem a little bit too white for me. But other than that, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Gonna be one of my main suits in the game. Love it to death. I'm... A huge fan of the Raimi black suit. Now I know a lot of people are like, but it's not the black suit, it's just a grayscale Raimi suit. <coughs> Possibly Spider-Man. <coughs> but it's still a fantastic suit. Sure, it's not one-to-one -to, -one to the original symbiote suit, but it doesn't need to be because it's perfect the way it is. And I love the brick texture on it. I love the silverish color. Oh, it's perfect. It's mwah. beautiful. Beautiful. Now, let's talk about these suits, the Deluxe Edition suits. Digital Deluxe, I should say. Now, first of all, Digital Deluxe Editions, stupid. I hate the idea of Digital Deluxe Editions, but it's only a $10 upgrade if you buy the physical copy, so really not that big of a deal. Don't buy the digital copy, just get the physical version and upgrade for 10 bucks. It's gonna cost you the same amount of money. Now, let's talk about them. We have 10 different suits. Here I have done a little ranking of them and how I feel about each of them. Obviously, the purple one, I'm going to be honest with you, I have not learned the names of these suits yet, they're super new, and I don't care enough. Purple one is garbage, don't like that one. The weird one with Peter's hair being stuck out like a mohawk, awful. The spaceman suit, terrible. The weird robot muscular flesh wing suit for Miles, it's okay, I guess. The weird Peter suit is it's okay. The one that looks like the uh, armored advanced suit, eh. uh, the one that's marked number four, pretty okay. The stone monkey suit, which is the third one, actually I kind of dig the stone monkey suit quite a lot. And the second one, I think it's the red specter suit for Miles, it's awesome. I love that suit. But of course number one is the tokusatsu suit, because I already love tokusatsu in general, and that's just awesome. That's all I have to really say about those, that's just, just they're cool. Now, moving on from suits, we have... The map. Now, the original Marvel Spider-Man and Miles Morales had, you know, a big map. It was the entirety of New York City. You know, New York City isn't a small place. It was about, like, I don't know, like 5,000 meters wide? Like, long, I should say. So, you know, if you're really good at swinging, you could traverse the map pretty fast, and it was fast travel. It never really felt like it was too big or too small. However, they've decided it was too small. So they've added an entire new section to the right of New York. And obviously, it's Queens and Coney Island. 
I mean, come on. That's just awesome. So now you have two separate areas to explore. Explore the familiar New York that probably won't change much except for getting rid of the Chrysler building. <laughs> but it won't change that much. So you got amazing New York as always. And then an entirely new landmass to, you know, swing around in. Now, obviously, since the buildings are lower in Queens, how are you going to get around easily? Well, of course, the web wings. Now, the web wings are a huge focus of this game. I'm not too jazzed about them being focused on more than swinging, but unlike some people, I don't think that they added the web wings to completely negate web swinging, because that would be stupid. That's whole, spider mans whole identity is one of, you know, swinging on webs to get places. So, add that with the web wings, and it's actually a pretty cool system. I probably won't use the web wings a lot unless I require to for side missions, but I can imagine somebody stringing between web wings, web swing, web wings, web swing, web winging into a huge forested area like Central Park, and then swinging off the edge of a tree into the city. That sounds freaking awesome. So personally, I'm not going to use it a lot, but I mean, the web wings, like they are a lot like the Minecraft Elytra, where if you aim your character down, you gain more speed, and then you look sharply up, you get an updraft, you carry your momentum. It's Minecraft Elytras, that's all I, like I, that's how I can describe it really. And that, you know, that's the perfect way, you can also go through wind tunnels and stuff, it's pretty cool. I mean, there's a ton of different side activities, we've seen a crap ton of them, like an absolute crap ton of them. We don't know much about a lot of them, but we know there's Spider-Verse related ones, which I'm a bit iffy on because I'm getting a little bit sick of Spider-Verse stuff because there's so many Spider-Verse comics. It feels like everything has to be Spider-Verse nowadays, which really sucks because I'd rather have focused stories contained in one universe rather than constantly shoving multiverse stuff down people's throats. But, but, you know, for people who like that stuff, it's great, you know, for them. And I'm not going to say it's awful. I just, you know, I'm a little, a little bit biased against it. But that's just me. The movies, the Spider-Verse movies are fantastic. But, you know. And then we have, like, different side activities. Of course, there's crimes. There's, you know, being able to help different people. They're bringing back the Friendly Neighborhood app from the Miles Morales game. And that's, like, one of the best systems from that game. So, obviously, they're going to bring it back. It's going to be better. It's going to allow you to switch between Miles and Peter, and it's perfect. You know, there's nothing so much I can really say about that. The side activities look like they're going to be the same general idea from the first game, but just expanded upon, like, now you're going to actually be able to help civilians. Instead of just stopping crimes, you'll be able to save civilians from, like, off of buildings and stuff, which is what I wanted from the first game. Uh, previous Spider-Man games had that, like, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, and uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Terrible game, by the way. So I'm glad that it's finally back. Hopefully they'll do the burning building thing, where you get to go through a burning building and stop it from, you know, killing people, because I actually had fun in those missions in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, so hopefully that returns and we get to do that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the symbiote suit. So, of course, you know, the symbiote suit is a thing, and I have a little bit of a, a little bit of a worry about it. So we know, obviously, Peter has a symbiote suit in the game. Whether he becomes Venom or not is a hugely debated topic. I'm not going to get into it because it's incredibly complicated and I just don't feel like talking about it. It's either going to be him or Harry, or eventually Harry. Eddie Brock's not in the game. It's stupid, but you know, whatever. But what I want to discuss is the way the symbiote suit works. So for some reason, they've decided that the symbiote suit is not toggleable over any suit. Because that's what all the rumors said. All the rumors said that each suit would have a symbiote suit variant, and you could toggle between the symbiote and your regular suit at any moment, like Web of Shadows or Spider-Man 3. That's not the case, however. The symbiote suit itself is a suit. It's completely separate from the things like the advanced suit. Which is like, okay, you'll still have the symbiote powers if you don't wear the symbiote suit, but they will... I don't know. We don't have any like footage of this happening but everyone who has played the game all the big youtubers who have played the game have said that the symbiote suit is not tied to the symbiote powers they're separate so like when you're wearing the advanced suit does it is it red goop or is it just still black i don't know i feel like that's really weird i'm not a huge fan of that but we'll just have to wait and see how insomniacs handles it 
We also know that movie suits do not have suit alts. Not every suit has an alt. Like, the Sam Raimi black suit is not an alt of the regular Raimi suit. It is completely different and separate from the Raimi suit. Kind of stupid in my opinion, but it's probably a weird copyright mandate by Sony, so whatever. And, you know, there's a few other things I'm a little bit, like, apprehensive about. Like, the fact that, um... I don't, I don't know, I feel like Kraven's not going to be that huge of a threat in the game. I feel like it's going to be structured just like the first game, where Kraven is the big bad for the first half, and then the second half it gets, you know, taken over by Venom. You know, okay. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm excited to see how the story plays out and how Peter slowly being taken over by the symbiote really affects people like Miles and MJ and how Harry gets mixed all into it. I just hope it's not too many characters, but, you know, they handled the Sinister Sticks in the first game, so I feel like it'll be better. And, yeah, I'm just really excited to see the story of the game. And that's really all I have to say for right now, I think. I discussed the suits, the map, and my general thoughts and opinions on it. I'm super, super hyped for this game. I'm not gonna do a playthrough of my, like, a stream of my first playthrough however i will be playing new game plus on stream i don't know if i'll stream on youtube or twitch but you know obviously you're on youtube here and my twitch will be in the description so whenever the game rolls around and i finish my first playthrough i'm 100 going to be doing a uh stream of the new game plus and just talking about my feelings about the game in general i'll probably make an update video talking about how like my hopes and my uh, discussions here, how they compared to the final release, and how I felt about the final release. And yeah, we'll, we'll just go from there. And if you want to stay, you know, up to date, I have a Twitter, and I have a Discord server that will also be in the description. Anyways, I will catch you guys later. Bye bye